Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The ocean is an unpredictable place. Unfortunately, it is also integral to the global supply chain, with thousands of ships traversing various waterways at any given time. When things go wrong, ships can end up stranded, capsized, or at the bottom of the sea. To reclaim their property, companies need to launch massive salvage operations. Though a wide range of methods are used, most modern salvage attempts include specialized ships and equipment, including crane barges, underwater cutting tools, and remotely operated vehicles. Using this highly specialized equipment and a deep understanding of the ocean, salvage companies work to recover valuable cargo, mitigate environmental risks, and in some cases, refloat or repair damaged vessels. The largest shipwreck salvage operation in history took place in the early 2020s. The subject was the MV Golden Ray, a 660-foot roll-on, roll-off cargo ship designed to carry up to 7,400 automobiles. In September 2019, the Golden Ray was making its way from the port of Brunswick, Georgia, with around 4,300 vehicles in its hold. It eventually caught fire and completely capsized just a few hundred feet offshore. The Golden Ray had a crew complement of around 23, but there was also a state-ordered harbor pilot on board providing navigational instructions. Though 19 crew members were rescued immediately, the fire forced rescue operations to be put on hold for 24 hours. At this point, an MH-65 Dolphin air crew from a Coast Guard station in Savannah, Georgia, was able to extract the remaining crew members from the vessel, which was now resting on its side. The wreck of the Golden Ray raised a lot of concerns beyond the presence of a 600-foot boat off the coast of southern Georgia. There were also concerns over the potential for oil and fuel leaks, as well as the presence of hazardous cargo, including vehicles with gasoline and other chemicals on board. Eventually, it was decided that the entire boat needed to be removed as soon as possible. TNT salvage was called in to handle the job, which involved using a special floating crane equipped with a cutting chain to slice the vessel into eight sections, each of which would weigh between 2,700 and 4,100 tons. Each section was then transferred onto heavy barges for transfer to the shore, where they would be further disassembled. In order to contain any potential environmental damage, TNT constructed an underwater wall of shipping containers around both the wreck and the salvage operation, which ended up taking a full year to complete. 
While the size of the Golden Ray complicated the salvage operation significantly, at least the ship was on the surface. The same can't be said about a 423-foot-long oil tanker named the Coimbra, which was torpedoed by a German U-boat and sank off the coast of Long Island in 1942. The Coimbra sank to a depth of 180 feet, along with 476,000 gallons of oil. In 2019, concerns over the potential leakage of this material forced a salvage operation. Organized by the U.S. Coast Guard and New York State Department of Environmental Conservation, this began by having divers go down to the wreck to install pumping systems to remove the oil. When dealing with recovery operations at such a hazardous depth, it's often necessary to utilize remotely operated vehicles or ROVs whenever possible. In the case of the Coimbra, the ROVs were used to assist in recovering the oil. Because they are controlled from the surface, ROVs can safely access and recover hazardous materials without having to worry about endangering anyone involved. They are also highly maneuverable and can access tight spaces and complex underwater environments that are challenging for human divers. Finally, ROVs can be equipped with specialized tools and manipulators that can cut, lift, and secure objects underwater. These tools allow them to perform delicate tasks like cutting through wreckage or attaching lifting cables to heavy objects. The United States Coast Guard spent several weeks pumping oil from the wreck, which it then transferred into secure containers for transfer back to shore. All in all, it took 83 people to conduct the salvage, with nearly all of the oil being recovered and taken back to New York for recycling. Every salvage operation poses its own unique challenges, so companies like SMIT Salvage and Towage need a wide range of vessels and equipment to rescue ships in distress. SMIT has four locations around the world, Houston, Rotterdam, Cape Town, South Africa, and Singapore. This allows them to operate on a global level. For instance, a grounding is very different from a capsizing or sinking. When the Blue Star chemical tanker accidentally ran ashore in Spain, SMIT first had to minimize the environmental risk. This meant constructing a zip line to pump the ship's load of hydrocarbons. Meanwhile, two heavy-duty tugs were called in to tow the stranded vessel away from the rocks. This proved enough to free the ship and allow it to move to a dry dock for inspection. It 
Even this seemingly simple operation took more than two weeks to complete. Though SMITs generally arrives after an incident has already occurred, they also provide courses in marine emergencies to ship crews. This is accomplished via a four-date Managing Marine Emergencies, or MME, training seminar designed to identify and assess vital first response actions to safeguard crew, ship, cargo, and the environment. The course attempts to provide participants with the skills and procedures necessary to secure their ship before the arrival of a salvage vessel. In some cases, this can take days, so it's crucial that the men and women on board know what to do and what not to do. The biggest challenge of any salvage operation is lifting. While cranes can be used at sea just as they can on land, they require large, stable vessels to safely lift sections of ships that can weigh hundreds of tons or more. These vessels generally work in tandem with cranes on the shore to safely and efficiently move equipment and ship sections to and from the deck. In some cases, larger mobile cranes can actually be positioned on the ship to increase the vessel's overall lifting capability. When it comes to crane size and lifting capability, no vessel can compete with the pioneering spirit. This massive catamaran-style ship is owned by All Seas Engineering and measures over 1,253 feet long. Its topside lift capacity is 48,000 tons. It also has a specialized jacket lift system, which is quite different from conventional lifting systems. It is mounted in the rear of the vessel and boasts a pair of connected 170 meter long beams. These can lift and support jackets of all sizes during removal and installation operations, allowing them to be transported in a near vertical position, safeguarding structure integrity. The goal of the jacket system is to enable the direct transfer of structures from ship to shore without the need for any support vessels. All Seas designed it as two standard vessels with a large central platform in the middle. This catamaran style makes it much more stable during lifting but it also allows the operators to straddle offshore platforms and lift them out of the water more easily. The ship has already proved an integral tool in the oceanic construction industry. That's the end of this video. We hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.